Welcome to the State of Curl 2020. This is my um, the first time I do this totally recorded because of you know the situation today. I'm Daniel Stenberg. I usually do this presentation at the, uh, our annual Curl App conference that we have in um, the spring every year, but this year is different, of course. So let me take you through a little uh, trip into the curl project, how we do, how curl as a uh, sort of thing is uh, is doing right now, you know, all sorts of aspects. So I'm going to try to, uh, this is going to be a fairly long presentation, I have a lot of slides, but I'm going to try to address things like growth and size of the project and, and the code, quality and testing of the project and code, what, how we fair in, in terms of commits, how we do with newcomers and uh, old timers, who's doing what, releases, what's the activity nowadays in the project, how we do in vulnerabilities, what I think about the how the users view our project now, maybe something and a little bit of the project, the money in the project, a little bit how and, and how much and so on, and I'll walk through the biggest things we've done during the last 12 months since we do these um, conferences basically in the spring every year this is a look uh, sort of spring to spring so so roughly April 2019 to April May 2020 uh, and some words about the, the less good parts about the curl project there aren't that many but I'll try to identified if some the f a few of them that I see. I want to tell you a little about my role in the project or how I perceive my role in the project and finally a few words about the future. I don't know much about the future. I won't know a lot about the future uh, and um, I'll explain later. So let me dive into this right away. How do we do? What's the growth and the size of the project in of CURL today? 2020, we turned 22 years old just a few months ago, actually just one month, uh, a little more than one month ago. Lines of code in the curl project. This is a graph showing the source code size. That's uh, This is only file size in the source lib and include directories in the git repository. Uh, I think it's an amazingly linear graph. It shows that we're growing what? Uh, maybe maybe around 20,000 lines of code in a little bit over two years. So maybe uh, roughly 10K lines of code per year uh, recently. Uh, and it seems like this is a trend that's been going on for a long time. Maybe it will continue. Maybe not. I don't know. There's nothing really that says that we that we see something different ahead. But still, we never know what what's there in the future. Um, so the question I get a lot actually is how come a simple little tool like this can have 165k lines of code? Isn't isn't it a lot? But um, I would argue that it's uh, it's pretty okay. So we support right now in these 165k lines of code, 25 transfer protocols. And here you can see them in a sort of uh, view of how they do on top of different transport. Uh, TCP, TLS, SSH, UDP and so on. So all of this is included in the 165k we support up to 32 different third-party dependencies. So of course, all of this is uh, in, in the code. Uh, all of these gr uh, green boxes are third-party dependencies and we can't really build with all of them at the same time, but we can build with a lot of different combinations. Um, s a bunch of them are mutually exclusive really, so you can do them at the same time, but many of them aren't. You really can build billions of different combinations of curl. We have and we know that curl has run on all these 72 different operating systems. 
I'm not sure whether they actually still build on all these, but uh, I know from reports that they have or are running on these operating systems, <laughs> and I think it's crazy because 72 operating systems is certainly more operating systems that mo most um, mortals can even uh, name. Uh, it's in a fascinating wall of operating system, and of course al it also runs on 20 different CPU architectures, and Basically, this is everything CPU-wise that is 32-bit or more, then curl can probably run on it, and or it ha already has run on it. So all of that you get wi within those 165k lines of code. Not to mention then these uh, specific uh, third-party dependencies that we support. Nowadays, 13 different TLS libraries, and here's a little graph showing how the number of uh, supported TLS backends have uh, varied over time and uh, as you can see it, the line actually goes down a few times uh, over here at, at the uh, right most top because we removed AX TLS a few years ago and we removed Polar SSL well recently in the beginning of 2020 here so we were up at 14 and we went down to 13. So all of that is in the code. We keep supporting these and uh, I'm not aware of any project anywhere supporting anywhere near this many TLS libraries. And from what I can tell, most of them are used every now and then. The number of command line options supported by the curl tool is keep I mean, it keeps growing. We're at 231. It's not easy to tell from this graph because of the uh, the levels here. You can just see that it's more than 200, but this is 200 up, up here in the rightmost again, rightmost part. Basically, all the, since these graphs are um, put out with a timeline, and the timeline is pretty long, we're looking mostly at the right end of the graphs and uh, up here and. Uh, that's 231 command line options that we have. L the l 231st we added just days ago in 7.70.0. So a lot of growth there too. The number of curl easy setup options is similarly growing and growing and we're up an at 200 and I believe 270. You can see that we've grown about 20 setup options during the last two years. So over the last uh, five years or so, we've been growing about 10 setup options per year. And it seems to be a trend that's been go on going on for a while. And yeah, there's no end in sight there either. Some of the options, of course, have gone deprecated over the time. So while they exist, some ancient options actually don't do anything anymore. I'll get back to that later on. <coughs> so, quite a lot of growth and size um, increase over the time in both code and support of different you know, operating systems, options and everything. So how do we make ev all of that, make sure that everything is keep working? The quality and testing parts of the project. It's of course not a separate part really, but it's an integrated thing. But as many people will mention, how we write this in C, is it memory unsafe? How can we do this? But C is not only efficient, it is way, way more portable than anything else. So uh, I always tribute C as a pretty sizable sort of one of the primary explanations why curl exists on all these different platforms, operating systems, architectures, because it's e you can run it everywhere. You can port it, run it on basically anything, 32-bit CPU, and basically any rudimentary operating system can run curl. So yeah, you c we could possibly avoid some of the security problems by switching to another language, but then we would sacrifice a lot of other things. So I don't foresee this to happen while well <laughs> at least while I'm this involved. So we try to mitigate the the, uh, the primary problems we'd see, you know, the memory unsafe th safe things we try to mitigate 
that or uh, mitigate uh, or sort of make sure that curl is good in general by writing readable code and making sure that we follow code style and indentation and everything the code sh should really look like it was written by a single person and it should be readable and understandable nothing you know clever or uh, creative or anything the code should be simple and easy to read at all times we don't always succeed in that I, <laughs> I'm the first one to admit it and I'm not sort of uh, I'm certainly not the one to, to say that we sometimes have failed and my, my I of course personally fail at times but that's where we're striving and we do that we reach that by following the style guides and making sure that we review code and make sort of point out it's each other's mistakes and we iterate over time of course we fix the problems that we find even if it landed before and we also add tests for everything here again we don't do we don't actually test everything but we're trying really hard right so uh, and we added uh, we do a lot of fuzzing these days which is also an awesome way to find problems especially sort of the mem mem memory and safe safe things and of course static code analyzing is a, is a good way to find suspicious spots in the code and we do a lot of static code analyzing these days we have a bunch of different tools that help us out find uh, suspicious points to fix and we fix them we don't leave any static code analyzing uh, analyzers warnings uh, lingering around we fix them so for example then we can take a look at this this is coverity i would say the state of the art static analyzer that we can use for c code here's uh, one of the recent uh, runs i did on curl and it found nothing so in this case it found 172 lines thousand lines of code there's no defect def uh, detected by coverty I run Coverty every now and then on the code to make sure that we stick to this and of course uh, every now and then it finds something that looks suspicious and then we fix it. So I always try to make sure that we fix all those defects before we do a release. So by um, if I do my job right we never release anything with a defect that Coverity can find. We are part of the OSS Fuzz project, which is a Google fuzzing project. They f throw a lot of garbage on libcurl nonstop around the clock. But we've been doing this for a while now, and we've pretty much flatlined the report graph. I don't have any graph here right now, but um, it was a long time since OSS Fuzz found anything particular in curl since now. Uh, we've sort of we fixed all the low-hanging fruits we fixed all those suspicious things and we haven't really added any good new entry points for for the fuzzer to find new weird paths in into curl so it's basically gone silent which is then you know, eh, it's hard to judge but it's actually better <laughs> when it's silent than when it finds something at least and now we have this new cool feature that they also provide in the OSS Fuzz project called CI Fuzz, which means that it runs 40 minutes of fuzzing on the code for every commit and PR we have in the curl project. So if we would commit or propose a PR that has something uh, seriously wrong memory-wise, chances are that CI Fuzz will find it and, and point it out course it's only uh, it'll run 40 minutes and it's then sort of capped by time so there's also this risk that we can commit stuff that wouldn't be <laughs> isn't just found within 40 minutes but still this is still um, a bump up in, in our CI infrastructure and make sure that it makes sure that we find more things earlier before we land them so yeah, we need to add more entry points to get more fuzzing done, or possibly find more problems. But I also should add that I know that several of the uh, security researchers we are in contact with every now and then who, uh, I'll get back to the bounty program, th but I, I know that most of those security uh, researchers, they run their own fuzzers. So I know that there there's more fuzzing than just there was as fuzzing going on. We also, do a little fuzzing on uh, separately on each CI uh, CI job as well, and as I mentioned, the number of test cases in the project has grown over time, and we're at num uh, we're we're approaching fourteen hundred. And what is a test case? That's a really wide 
it's a rough number it's back it's actually in this case it's an it's just a file in the file system in the git repository so it doesn't really say anything how good it is how much it tests or anything but it's one way to count just to make sure that we're doing progress and we're adding things over time so yes we test more and more over time of course I mean, but of course we add more code too so as you can see it's very linear this one as well so the the linear the code linearity and the test case linearity they're roughly the same so i think that we're actually over time we're adding more test cases than we add code so i think that's in general good i did this little counter this shows number of bug fixes we've done in the project that's the blue graph uh, and the the pink one here has um, uses the y-axis on the right side, which is bug fixes per day. Landed in Git, uh, counted in the release notes file. So we can see that from around 2014 something, we've uh, 2015 we went up to. Since then we've been over one bug fix per day in the project, and from 2018 something we're over one and a half bug fix per day. And yeah, as you can see in, in recent days, we're circling around the two bug fixes per day. Actually, in the most recent uh, release, 7.70.0, we're approaching three bug fixes per day. So we'll see. As And uh, this pink line here, that's an average over the f last five releases. So. Uh, I had to make it an average because some releases actually go quite it goes up and down pretty much uh, pretty steep between releases so I had to do it average wise to smoothen out uh, temporary uh, spikes and, and, and bottoms in, in the graph and I think uh, an average of five releases and since we do releases every eight weeks on general um, if we do things correctly maybe sometimes slightly shorter but five releases then makes it 40 weeks so that's so the pink line here is an average over roughly 40 weeks more or less i think it shows that we're keeping up in the project and that we're actually you know compared to a long time ago we're doing a lot more things and what is a bug fix a bug fix is anything that improves the project usually a lot of these fixes are actually fixes to documentation and which you could argue if that's a bug fix or not but we still count anything that fixes the project uh, as a bug fix there are also bug fixes done to test cases for example which also doesn't really fix the code but it's sort of it long term it improves the project and we have so one way that we're making sure that the project is getting better is by adding more CI. CI then that runs, builds and tests and verifies everything in every commit and every pull request we do in curl. And as you can see in this little graph with the with the purple one here on the right top, that's the total count uh, up here. Uh, total count is now over 80. I think it's 82, 83. And it, um, and as you can see, we we use nowadays we use five different CI services, and they're we're all we're bumping up them all basically. The, there's only one that we haven't really raised significantly recently, and that's this one, Serious CI. We should probably use that more. And uh, the the theory here is of course that we need a lot of CIs to make sure that we land better code or find mistakes earlier before we land them in the master branch. And we've recently, and some of us have worked hard to distribute the CI jobs evenly between the different CI services so that we could take full advantage of each service instead of overloading one. As we've done in the past, as you can see, this the, gr the green one here is Travis CI. So the Travis was alone for a very long time, which made us rely, I, I would say, a little bit too much on Travis. So it got sort of a little bit overloaded and then it then made everything slow so we by adding more work on the other ci services we even uh, out the work and we get it completed uh, we get all the jobs completed in a shorter period of time and uh well thi this this graph shows it spread out between the different ci services 
the, all these CI services provide free CI services for projects that are open source. We actually have more than the free tier on three of them, and I'll get back to how we do that. Um, so th that means that we're actually getting the results done uh, a little bit faster than we do than we did before when we only had the free tier, because the free tiers are often limited in how the number of parallel builds and what kind of CPU performance you get on these uh, services. And uh, spread out uh, th the same information, the CI jobs, we can see them spread up per platform, how we build and run tests on, um, on different platforms. So uh, as you can see, we started out in July 2017 in the, in the uh, left side of this graph. We only had Linux and Mac tests, and we the, the number of Linux tests have that number has grown significantly over time. And recently, as you can see, in 2019, something we started adding m uh, Windows tests, and we added FreeBSD tests. So there are at least a bunch of them, uh, different platforms. And of course, uh, why do we need so many? tests on, on Linux and, uh, and Windows and so on, and it doesn't really show here, but of course we do a lot of different build combinations, you know, switching on and off different third-party dependencies and different options in the, in the build. So why, w when we have 30-something builds on Linux, they're all different, right? Different compilers, different uh, options and, and uh, features enabled and disabled in, in the build to make sure that those different combinations still work fine and, and are good. And a bunch of them, of course, run things like analyzers and debug things. Uh, and most of them run the entire test suite on those particular targets. And how, s so then, okay, I said almost 1400 test cases, 82 CI jobs on three, four operating systems on five CI services. What's the test coverage then? Eh. We used to do measure that, but it's uh, it's really, really flaky and hard to measure, and we've given that up. So we had around 72 to 78% of on the cover of the IO service, but it was really flaky. Both the service is really flaky, so it went up and down, and you could say one of these days we could have zero, another day you said hundreds, and then it went back to 78 or 82. Or so it, it really turned out to be really annoying to have the service around, so we shut it down. And we all also did the test coverage only for a single TLS as a resolver config setup, which mean, meant that, yeah, sure, for that particular setup, we had that particular coverage, which it didn't really say everything. And coverage really, test coverage is really hard to measure in a project like Curve when you have a billions of different build combinations, different architectures, different platforms, whatever. So what, what, do you, what do we actually mean by test coverage? So I, we went back for that. And then also we, did, we, w we weren't really able to run all the tests in, in these uh, test coverage test cases. So we didn't actually get the real number for the test coverage either. So yeah, it did really help us. We ditched it. But it's in that vicinity somewhere, maybe up to 80%. Okay, so who's doing all these commits uh, and um, what's the t commit frequency <coughs> and so on? Onwards, onwards. So, okay, I'm doing a fair amount of commits. So if we count all my commits done in the project over time, you can s we can see that I still have done accumulated. I'm at 57% something. As you can see, I'm th my share is the blue the blue one on top here and the green one is everyone else's so my share has certainly shrunk significantly significantly over time and i i really hope and i really think that it will continue to shrink because others are going to step up and work harder and do more and uh, uh yeah but I'm d i just wanted to show you that yeah i'm still um i'm still um holding the wheel in the project, I still do a lot of commits. This is the accumulated count, of course, which makes uh, all my early commits count a little bit too much. So <coughs> if we would see my commits on a month-to-month -month basis, I wouldn't have 57%, I would have less, because I do less than 57 recently. 
anyway, and here's the total com um, commit count per month. And here again, we see we have the blue one that is actually counted, ex shows exactly every month, number of commits per month. And uh, the pink one in the middle there, that's the 12 month average commits per month. And it's amazingly how we keep circling around the average there being around 100 up to it, it was uh, I mean here 2005 we had a peak at 175 something average and then we've been uh, circling around the 100 average line where as you can see the recent few months we've been up in the 150 200 range so the average will go up a little bit here but we keep the pace which i think it's it's interesting as we get more and more committers with the code size is growing the test guys test numbers are, are increasing but the commits per month frequency seems to be fairly i mean it's not really stable as you can see it's up and down up and down everywhere but it, the average is it is within a, a pretty narrow scope and I, I think it's good. It shows it certainly doesn't show any sort of decline. No particular growth in speed either. But number then again, this is number of commits. What is a commit? A commit can be a very small commit and can be a very big commit. I don't know exactly. <coughs> Maybe I should have some sort of data on how if commit sizes or complexity have changed over time. Maybe it has. I don't know. I, I really have no way of knowing. It's really hard to measure too, right? Maybe I could do a graph based on the commit uh, sizes and see if the like the median size of the commits have been have changed over time. Um, anyway, commits per year uh, then shows basically the same information. It's fairly solid. We can see that it's a little bit up and down. It was actually down already in two thousand six. It was you can see we were sub 1000 and we were been hovering uh, if you can see here 2009 10 11 12 we were only a little bit over 2000 uh, 1000 commits and then 13 14 we had some uh, extra activity and then back to the 13 1400 uh, range we were at what's this 1300 last year and this is 2020 this is of course we're now on uh, april 30s so of course <coughs> this should be less than half of what we expect this year. So we, I think we're at roughly at the 2019 pace so far this year. So it's still, I don't know what to tell about this, but it shows that we're, we're, um, we're moving ahead in, the, in, in a similar fashion like before. If we take a look at commit authors per year, we can see that we certainly are increasing in number of authors in a per year per year basis which then taken together with a combined with the previous uh, graphs it, it'll tell us that we have more authors per year but if we remain the same number of commits yeah sure the the previous we uh, we do have less commits per author than we have uh, had over years. Maybe I should do that as a separate graph. I'll try that out at, at some point. Uh, so yeah, uh, and again, 2020 here is a very low graph, but of course we're only um, we're four months in, so that's a third of the year. So I'm I'm uh, estimating that we're getting up close to the 2019 number anyway. And as you can see, the 2019 was actually slightly shorter than the 2018 number, which is the record almost 160 authors and what I think is most positive with this graph is the, the darker green ones which is the first time authors so last year alone we had uh, over 100 fir first time authors in the project and as you can see 2018 also over 100 and we're already in 2020 we're approaching 40 first time commit authors in the project so still a steady stream of first timers in the project and I that's I think the really good news for and, and, and good takeaway from this apart from that we're still you know hundreds of people every year working on improving curl this way there these are people actually writing commits so 
th that's even uh, I would say one step more than just helping out they're actually you know rolling up their sleeves and actually writing stuff submitting a pull request in uh, and, and getting stuff merged I have this little thing if you do 10 commits or more within the project within a single year I I did this graph that sort of if you do that you you're soon to be sort of a core team member 10 commits that's not a lot but as you said as, as you saw before we do less than 1500 commits per year so maybe 10 commits for a single user is still not that many people do that and if we look at how many people are actually doing 10 commits or more per year we can see that in 2019 we were only eight people who did it and in 2020 we're six so far now we have actually nine people in 2019 10 in 2018 13 in 2017 17 here being the sort of the peak and also 2014 and yeah we're around this number of people we're usually uh, uh, usually this the same set of people of course i'll get back to some names later but uh, it doesn't really matter most usually these 10 th this core team that do 10 commits or more we usually end up with these are the people have who do more than 80 between a they we do 80 to 90 percent of all the commits within the project in a year <coughs> so how do we do with newcomers and, and old timers as i showed before with those green graphs quite a number of committers quite a number of newcomers so we can see the number of contributors in the project it keeps growing we try really hard to give credit to the correct people you know when we get a bug report and everything we make sure that we credit um, who reports and who s suggests things and who helps out and everything uh, so to make sure that all the names are recorded for for people who help up and w they're added as contrib contributors in the thanks file and this graph shows the number of names in the thanks file in the git repository it keeps growing it's up to the it's up in the 2200 number right now so it's uh, yeah it's actually growing slightly faster over time so you can see it's not strictly it's not a clean straight line it's actually more of a little bend to it so it's going faster and faster which i think it's, it's uh, awesome and it's a great i think it's a testament that we're succeeding in in being um we are able to be to get people's contributions to guide them to get the bug reports and to get their feedback and to get that back into the project and as long as we do this i think we're in a good position so i think this is a sign of good health not that we <laughs> have this many things to fix because we will always have a lot of things things to fix because we keep changing things but i think as long as we get a l l large number of contributors and contributions we're good and of course if you look at this little bump here back in 2005 and you wonder what happened did an army show up that particular year no in that particular year i did um i went through all backlogs and make sure that, that i updated the thanks file correctly because i had been sloppy with that before and, and not really then i only so up until that point in time i basically only counted you know core contributors so the name list was really limited to a few people like 30 maybe up to 80 at this point and then I'd, i i went i realized that I should make sure that to give everyone who helps out proper credit and then i went back through the change logs and added those names to the thanks file so that's why it bumped up that particular year and since then i've been we've been i've been we've been trying really hard to make sure to give everyone who helps out proper credit that's the that's the how we can pay respects to everyone who helps out mention them and say thanks because we we're an open source project we we are only the results of what the contributors do so a lot of contributors 2200 commit authors then um, i mentioned that previously so so authors being anyone who has written something merged into the main curl git repository 
So that's slightly different than a contributor because a contributor can be just someone who reported a bug and uh, here's someone who actually landed a change, a commit in, in the source repository, which doesn't have to be code, it could be documentation, but in test cases, but usually it is code. And uh, here we can see that the number of commit <coughs> authors is reaching, it's not quite 800 yet, but we're getting there. I estimate that we're, we're going to surpass 800 within months. So so sometimes this summer we're going to hit the, the 800 ceiling here. Um, we can also see the number of single commit authors here. So we, since these days we get these submissions, these contributions via GitHub as pull requests. So if they do, if people, when w when their pull requ their submission is okay, we reviewed it, it's fine, we merge it. And uh, if they only did that once, these authors, they will be counted as a single commit author. And as you can see, the lower here, the, the green graph is the number of people that added uh, that exists as a commit author that only ever did one commit. So right now then, in the beginning of 2020, we're a little bit more than 500 single commit authors out of the almost 800 authors. So we're roughly 300, less than 300 authors who have actually written more than one commit. Um, but it's good. I mean, I of course, we prefer people who, who are, you know, repeat contributors who come back and help us again. But if it's still better to get a first as single commit author help us out than not help us out at all. So I'm still grateful. They're still good contributors, good authors. Even if we, we of course, should strive to do everything to make sure that these people can come back and, and help us out again. And I actually think the there are more likely to come back again when, while when they've done it once. But uh, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I also think that <laughs> they fix a thing that itch, they scratch their itch. And when, when they're done with it, they move on. Their itch is scratched. So maybe they only had that single itch and then they don't come back to our project. They go fix another itch in another project. Still good stuff. Authors per month over time. The number of authors per, per uh, well, these are the, the um, commit authors. So in Git, then the graph here with the bars show the numbers per month. Of course, here we can see this is April 2020. We're up at 26, 27 authors. And the pink line here is the 12 month average. So we can see that it's actually growing over time. And that that sort of follows the same pattern I, I showed you before, right? The number of commits might be roughly the same as before, but we're having more authors per month than before. So I like that. I like that we have a lot of authors. Good. Uh, I like to see that as a sign of good, he good health in the project. And uh, the number of first-time authors in the project, it's uh, still growing as well. As you can see, the 12-month the average here, the pink line, shows that we're at nine new first-time authors per month on average, which is, I think it's pretty amazing. Us being 22 years old, we're using, we're writing code in C, uh, sort of a fundamental library style of project that isn't always attracting people, contributors, because it's perceived to be complicated. And uh, if you see this average thing, it's been above uh, above six newcomers, first-time committers since 2017. So we've been maintaining this pace of first come first comers coming into the project for over three years now. And, s and s uh, some months we really get really high peaks up here. I think it's good. I hope that we can maintain this to get sure that we get more. Because I mean, of course, first time committers, that's the that's the entry point, right? To a new regular contributor. Th th everyone has to do it the first time sometime. And by making sure that people can do it easily and, and conveniently and, and uh, 
I mean, so they get a nice uh, experience of the project, right? We should be friendly, we should uh, accept them, help them out, and, and uh, make sure that their code lands fine and uh, successfully in curl. I think that is the first condition to make sure that they want to come back, they want to stick around in the project and help us succeed in the future. So who's doing most most of the commits? And I limited this little check f um, to since January 2017 just to cut off all old legacy from the first um, 19 years or so. So I do, here's a pers uh, uh, the x-axis here is percent of all the commits. So as you can see, I've done more than 50% of all commits since 2017. And uh, Marcel, Jay, Steve, Daniel, Patrick, Dan, Mark, Michael, Johannes, and Victor are the other 10 top authors, as you can see. I mean, the number, of and, and again here, what's a commit, right? I think I do more of, of the maintenance commits that are silly and just updates, you know, like the release notes and stuff. So I get an unfair amount of release notes, uh, sorry, commits. So by counting commits, I think I, gave, I give myself a little bit too much importance. But maybe it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just some kind of sh sign who, uh, of activity in the project. But um, these are basically the same people that has been around for a while. So these are the known names in the project, the, the regulars, part of the this core team that I mentioned before. These are basically the same names that show up as the top uh, committers every year, the, the last few years. So we do releases in curl. As I mentioned, we do we try to do releases, and you know that every eight weeks, right? So if if things work correctly, we do release on a Wednesday, and then the Wednesday eight weeks after that, the first four weeks, four weeks, the first four weeks, we do we much changes and and uh, um, well changes to behavior and, and new features and stuff, and the second half of the period the four weeks preceding the release we do nothing but bug fixes so we don't merge changes or, or features anymore that's a typical idea so how many days do we have between the releases i mean how, how what does it end up like and here again look at the far right of the graph because here's here's the sadness of this graph we had a lot of these these drops are all failures so, so you know we we want to have them at 56 so so 56 is the ideal uh, height. The 56 number, we started eight weeks release cycle. I think we started that roughly at the 2014 time. So before that, we did it more ad hoc. And since 2014, 2015, something, it became um, sort of the project policy. We do it every eight weeks, period. Well, we adjust it sometimes, but uh, that's sort of the the main idea is every 56 days. So uh, every drop here that is significant, not just a little a week on and off, but uh, if a, a significant drop pair that signifies a stressed release or a, a release that is shorter, uh, a release cycle that is much shorter than planned originally, which is a sign of a serious bug or a serious security problem that we had to get out before the end of the regular release. So that's a failure. And if we look at more modern times than here, here tw I'm, I'm looking here now at the far, far down right part of the graph, we can see that we did recently with this, this is uh, 7.69.1 release. We did it really short. We did it after seven days, which was a, a complete failure on our part to do a, s a solid release. I mean, we did a release before at 56 and then another at uh, seven days. Not good, and we did them before here. So, but we can see that we didn't do many of them here in 2019, 2018, 2019, we started to get better at it. I'm hoping that these three here were not the sign of a new trend, but we fixed it or and we're getting better. And we should make sure to to really stick to our uh, changes and bug fixes uh, periods. And we should make sure that we have test cases that cover everything. And so these things shouldn't happen. This one happened because we didn't have proper tests for a particular problem that occurred. 
hopefully we will have that next time. Well, here's the bug fixes again. Let's skip it now. <coughs> so activity in the project. Just, well, commits and everything else are also activity, of course, but uh, um, here are some graphs and other views on activity, like monthly issues on GitHub. How many issues are created? How many pull requests are created? How many open issues and pull requests do we have in on GitHub? So this graph starts in 2015, and it starts in 2015 because 2015, actually I think it's in March, which is, uh, if you look at this first bump on, on the graph and looking at the left side here of the graph, uh, the first bump here is when we announce in the project that, hey, we're going to switch to use the GitHub model for changes and, and issues. So we basically said, ditch the old way of doing things in curl, and we used the, the source force bug tracker up till then. So we said we switched to GitHub for issues and switched to GitHub for pull requests starting now. So before that, it's not important how we did at GitHub because we didn't really want anything to happen on GitHub. So we started there. And since then, we've, as you can see, we've gradually grown. And then the blue line here being created pull requests. So we're getting f more and more pull requests over time the green one created issues more stable but we're still at uh, somewhere around 40 50 issues per month so that's one uh, one and a half issue per day pull requests up in the two three pull requests per day and the the red here shows that we're closing them fairly quickly so these are i called it the median open number of issues and pull request, which means that every day during the month, I count how many that are open and I pick the median one in the middle. And that's what this graph shows. Um, so yeah, we s we're, uh, we're roughly, we're between 160 issues and pull requests open every, well, typically every day. And uh, <coughs> I think that's good. We're trying to close them as, as fast as we can, but uh, some of them are really hard to close out. And uh, yeah. I, b I believe in not keeping too many open because we drown in them and we get lost in, <coughs> in, in all of them. So that uh, I think it shows uh, a healthy activity level and that we're, n we're doing okay. We're closing them at least as fast as we're getting them and we're getting them, but pull requests are increasing issues roughly the same. And I, I think this is an interesting graph. This shows the ages of the GitHub issues in in uh, the repository. <coughs> and here's definitely, if, if we're into statistics and graphs, we can show the difference between median and average. So we get most issues are closed within the same day. So in, in this graph, I every issue that is filed will be at least one day old because it's been there at least one day part of one day. So the blue line here can never be lower than one because one is the lowest number, but uh, <coughs> it can suddenly be higher. So a lot of our issues and pull requests are closed really fast. So the median is really low. So more than half are usually closed within one or two days. So that's why the median is really, really low. But then we have these really these complicated issues. Some of them linger around for a really long time. So that makes the average s go off really high. So s at some months we close issues that are really old. And that makes the green one, which is the average for, for that month, go take off really a lot at some, po at some point in time uh, or in some months, I should say. I'm not sure what this shows other than that uh, most issues are closed fast. Some issues are really, are, are really not. But I mean, if, if they're tricky and if they remain, eh, they're just tricky and they remain. Some of them are really hard to reproduce. Some of them are hard to understand. Some of them we don't, there's a lot of back and forth in. So that's just the way it is. 
<coughs> another thing to see activity in the project and here's one of the few graphs that actually shows a decline and a decline that's been going on for uh, for a long time so this is mailing list posts per month and here we can see the two different collections of, of lines here the, the top one which is the blue and the green that's the curl library mailing list the blue being number of posts per month and the green being in the the 12 month average number of posts per month and and the pink line here is the number of posts on the curl users list with the black being the average number of posts on the curl users list so there's and we can see that basically we had a peak around 2009 which has the m had the most number of mailing list posts per month we basically averaged at uh, well near 400 emails per month on the ma mailing list and since then it's been gradually been d slowing down and here as you can see this i think this drastic drop on the curl library list is 2015 something and which also then signifies the beginning of us adopting the github model of pull requests and issues so before this point in time we handle a lot of the bug bug reports and uh, patch submissions pull requests on the mailing list so this drop the, sig the i mean the largest part of this drop is actually activity switching over to github and that is really good in general uh, at least since this point in time maybe some when we started uh, added a ci system and everything for curl so then then the way of, of um, doing patch submissions on github was really a, a huge improvement to the curl model of developing software since we now test everything before we merge it before before those ci's we tested everything after it merged, which is less good, of course. So that's the activity on the mailing list. So we're still at uh, we have still average at uh, around 100 emails on the curl use uh, curl library mailing list per month. <coughs> so okay, here's one of the more more interesting things that happened in the project over the last year or so vulnerabilities so how do we do security vice vice in the project do you know <coughs> cves per year reported by the project and i here's one of my favorite graphs of uh, my entire person entire presentation here we're at zero cves in 2020 we were at what eight in 2019 and we were at 12 2018 and we had this peak in 2016 i mentioned it before in other uh, elsewhere that but 2016 we had a security audit done by a, a external party and they found a lot of issues we did our record release w uh, with a record number of cvs in 2016 11 fixed cvs in a single release in 2020 here we did a most recent release with th that was our sixth release in a row without a single security release uh, security advisory we also uh, we're on a record spree really with the longest period of time since 2013 without a reported security problem so we're it looks good i'm not saying that we're past this or that there there aren't any more security problems in curl because i'm sure there is but it looks like we're doing some things right at least so we're we're going in the right direction we're we're flattening this curve at least to some to some level and uh, i think this is good i hope that we can maintain this and it would uh, one of the dream is of course that we will keep this bar at zero during the entire 2020 and if we do uh, i'll buy everyone uh, an extra beer at next year's curl up um right so cs per year and but if you if we look at i have another fun graph which is um, this then okay this is number of fixed cvs over time it just I just like this one particular one because at the top right here we can see it flat line is a plateau here which is now 230 days something uh, since the previous uh, bump on, on the curve which just shows that we've we haven't increased the number <coughs> in over half year and that's good that's good 
it's been racing really fast since 2014 something and I hope that we will slow it down we're going um, <laughs> an interesting view of vulnerabilities which isn't really about this year much because only three of these vulnerabilities happened the last year and if we look at this graph shows um, the age how long the particular vulnerability existed in the code when it was reported and fixed so basically the purple graph shows um, the number of days that flow exists in code so it shows that code can be vulnerable to security problems for a very long time until someone finds the problem I guess it uh, you know many eyeballs isn't enough to show uh, to find security problems so and and the green one here is there as a reference to show how old the project was at the time the bug was found so basically it existed this long before if I look at the top right here and then the bug was introduced and it existed so in, in this particular case issue number 74 something it existed in almost well 6500 days in the project before it was found and fixed and well the bi the good part here is that the, the graphs are at least sort of they're shrinking right so the three last ones they were at least <laughs> lower than 4000 days but and the, and the and the very most recent one was 1000 days i think here so that is good uh, but 1000 days that's still almost three years so the, the bug existed in code in three years until someone found out and reported it and we fixed it hopefully this graph will keep shrinking and if when we find more security problems in the future hopefully they are recently added and we will you know keep adding low bars here that's the dream not sure it'll be like that I, <laughs> I don't think looking at this graph historically we can at least say that no that's not how it works the bug bounty we introduced last year uh, actually we did it uh, just after last year's curl up so this is basically all news from from within the last year people have submitted bug bounty submissions you know s suspected security problems or <coughs> and um, the number of uh, those are at this range so they started out we started out the program in late April and uh, as you can see the the top line here is the number of submissions and the green one is the number of valid submissions or submissions we okayed and gave uh, gave rewards to and ended up as security uh, advisories mm, so as you can see we have uh, got a lot of submissions mm, most of them not security related problems that follow uh, that sort of adheres to our policy if we look at more stats from the bug bounty we got during up until now we have gotten 112 submissions six of them were sort of valid and uh, ended up as rewards a few more of them were actually valid but they were more we, di we didn't they were valid as in we consider them bugs not security related vulnerabilities so i think maybe this roughly the same amount were converted into regular bugs and just fixed because they weren't we they weren't considered to be security related so <coughs> out of those those six reports got a, a total reward bounty of 1400 us dollars which i mean in comparison to the big bounty programs in the world is not a lot and since we've managed to keep the number down so much as in a uh, number in reported rewards we really we're committed to raising the awards so we will give more money to future reports the average bound is 233 dollars it's going to be more we respond to to security reports within an hour on average which i think is good for one over oh, that goes for these 112 submissions then we the first response is within an hour which is i think is good since we're in a global world and people can submit reports from any time zone we triage things and and figure them out uh, in closer and get a first assessment of the problem within a day on average again and we're all here uh, in the curse security team and we do assess the bounty uh, on average within 10 days 
I think we could improve on this, but still, it, there's a bunch of decisions in, in figuring everything out. So I think 10 days is still a good average. We usually then resolve the problem within 19 days. And I think here is also a matter of, uh, I think we usually uh, resolve it when we do release with effects and that the release is often, usually even when it comes to security problems, we stick to this release schedule. So we, we just, you know, we queue up the release uh, of the fix to the next uh, already scheduled curl release. So it this the resolution the resolution time here will then vary <coughs> upon when during the release cycle we get the security report. So what have we learned from all these past vulnerabilities? Um, this is basically the same <laughs> conclusions I had last year. So we we have I would say that we have a integer overflows are tricky and they have tricked us into some of these flaws and we're mitigating these flaws by a few different things. We have fixed, we have a more, we nowadays have a safe realloc function within curl to help us avoid some of the realloc flaws we had previously. We have, uh, we have a global string length limit in curl so we basically you can't provide an inf <laughs> a two gigabyte string to curl in a, uh, one of these string options to curl anymore because it's not we don't assume <laughs> we don't think anyone actually wants that so did i think r nowadays the limit for a string past a curl is eight megabytes um and i'm going to fix more we have uh, this more uh, uh, the din buff dynamic buffer pr in 5300 which is a uh, pending merge is also another way to make sure that we um, work on mitigating how we handle dynamic buffers in curl so all dynamic buffers will will first it will use a single function sort of set of functions within curl so that it'll be a less number of separate implementations and they will all have a fixed upper limit of number of bytes they can contain so also another mitigation, I, we won't accidentally let any one of those grow into an, a, a, s a ridiculous amount of memory. And they can even be much smaller than eight megabytes in many cases for cases where we don't expect them to ever be more than say a few caves or hundred caves or one megabyte or so. So limit it more where, where possible. And of course we know then, as I showed you with this graph, that code lingers uh, I mean, vulnerable vulnerable code lingers in the code a long time until we find them and get them reported. But fuzzing is really the king, and even all those security reporters who report the most serious problems, most of them found the problem with fuzzing, usually their own fuzzing or a applied version of the fuzzing using different different technologies. Fixing the problems that's usually s very straightforward still. So whatever people say, it is actually finding the problem and getting a reproducible thing that actually identifies the, the culprit. That's sort of what we put on the on the burden of the security uh, researchers and those who report the problems. That's where the, the heavy labor here is. When once they've found out and reported and, and so we can trigger this bug like thi this, then fixing the problem is oftentimes <coughs> not hard at all and as I said before we are going to raise the bounties where we have already had that discussion internally in the curl security team and we're going to do it more so, even more so so even if even if people continue to report low I mean low graded low security risk uh, security problems we are going to raise the bounties more and we're going to pay up more money than we did in the past so if you find security problems assume that the the the, uh, the average bounty will go up over the coming years okay so how do users perceive our project it is hard to assess or understand w uh, the outside world's view of our project right maybe because we're so entrenched and, and particularly myself of course i work with curl all day i have i work with curl all night so that i'm sort of i'm very deep into my own perception of what it is 
<coughs> so we do this annual user survey and it struck me this year that we do them typically uh, in the main May time period, which is actually just after the curl up um, conferences usually. So maybe next year I will try to do it in the other way around and do the annual user survey before curl up to get feedback from the survey into the curl up conferences. Uh, but of course this year the curl up is a bit screwed up anyway, so I'm not sure it, it matters this year. But we do the annual user survey every year. We did it last year in 2019. We asked a lot of questions about the curl project in general. It's really, really hard to, to ask questions. It's hard to interpret the, the answers, but we get a lot of information. So I'm going to do it again in 2020 uh, in, in the mid-May timeframe. So if you, if you have ideas of what to ask about and how to help us get users tell us what's good and bad, let me know. Otherwise, we will mostly rerun the same one from the previous years. Also, making sure that we ask about roughly the same things, making sure that we can compare year to year. And maybe that is the best part of these annual surveys, that we can actually compare how we got the answers from the years before and see if we're going up and down in various uh, questions. We got 732 responses last year. Hopefully, we will be at least that this year so because i think there's um, some truth in the numbers so we at least reach out to a lot of different users even of course it is hard to reach out to a really really wide variety of users because it's still a limited kind of user that will respond to uh, something like this and here's the url to last year's analysis as a pdf uh, and what we can learn from that some of that of course has been fed into the project that has and is nowadays sort of what we did this year is at least partially influenced by the answers we've gotten to the user survey not only 2019 but previous years as well so what do you that, that about asking the users and, and getting users feedback and one way to see user activity at least is how many people are actually visiting the curl website how many are using uh, the website? I don't know. We were uh, leaning heavily on Fastly these days. Since a few years back, they, they're a CDN. They host our website or they front it really. So they run, their we are behind their CDN services. But using their s mm, uh, statistics, I can see that we nowadays, the last within the last 12 months, we they have served 2.1 million requests per day from our website, which is more than the 1.5 million we did the previous 12 month period, which is an insane number of uh, requests, I think. So we served 53 terabytes of data, uh, which is uh, up 27% from the previous uh, 12 months period. And you can see here that I'm really vague in what this means because this is all the information I have I don't know how many people have downloaded I don't know the number of visitors I don't know how many times people have downloaded curl and I don't care either really um, but but these are sort of these are these are just this is just the accumulated summed up information over you know over all the uh, front end the CDNs servers that Fastly runs for us or hosts the our site for us with. So at least we can see that there's a significant increase in traffic over the year. And I don't see any particular reason other than that there's more users or more downloads and more traffic on the site because we haven't increased the download package size or anything like that in any notable way, at least. So more more users are are hammering the site of course fastly makes the v website fast and close to most users since they have their service distributed all over the world so it's much better than when the entire world came to my little server here in stockholm because it was fast for us in in northern europe but it was really really slow for users elsewhere in the world this way it's faster for more people and we have no logs we have no tracking and as i said we don't have much stats on on you know downloads and usage and in, in general <coughs> it's rarely a problem so 
it is a very good privacy boost however so that we don't track we don't know anything about users of the site and that's also at least partly a reason why we don't run any ads on the site so we don't we don't know we don't track we don't care we provide information as much as possible and of course downloads and yeah they're awesome they're sponsoring us with this for free so they're really they're good friends of the project we we like fastly thank you fastly uh how is the the <laughs> i think the google trends is a fun thing to just measure how curl then fares compared to others so if, if you check curl and it actually has curl as a software project and you can compare it with wget or and open ssl for example li as i did here as and they're also counted as software projects i don't know exactly how google know this but at least <laughs> it, it says so and i can use this as a comparison so i can see how sort of what people are googling for over time and as you can see here here's i limited the, this to the five year the, the recent five years so it's uh, you can see the left most part of the graph is the may 3rd is that 2015 and it's the right part has to be somewhere and then right now then 2020 and of course curl is at least beating the other projects by far in in popularity and i'm, I'm not actually comparing much to the other i just wanted to have some reference how, how, how they fare and how how they are in the google trends and i'm more interested in the um, development of the graph and you can see that it it, it is increasing slowly or it, it was below 75 whatever 75 means but it was actually below it here in 2015 and has been slightly over and then yeah so it's i would say that it's at least gone up a little bit at least in 2015 maybe fairly stable since 2017 and no significant rise and no significant drop at least so i don't know at least that's some sort of signal that we're maintaining some sort of uh, popularity or or uh, people are aware of us at least uh, to the same amount roughly as before i i like these drops in in the graphs you see one two three four five the significant drops in in the, in the google trends and it turns out that these are around christmas time and that they actually drop in all these projects so all three projects we all drop significantly significantly during christmas and for some reason and we drop much more than the others so apparently you don't search for curl during christmas who knew now we know uh, i don't know what to do with that knowledge but still uh, i i just wanted to keep this slide from last year we are still a hundred percent passing in the uh, cii projects best practices that's the core infrastructure initiative which basically has a bunch of requirements the best practices for open source projects uh, i have a registered curl there and i have filled in all the answers for curl and we're 100 percent passing at that we're following the best practices for open source projects we're not at the silver level because of the reason that is uh, quoted here so we can't we can't really <laughs> we can't achieve silver level here without having a legal mechanism where all developers of non-trivial amounts of project software assert that they are legally authorized to make these contributions and i have no intention of, of creating such a legal uh, mechanism either so <coughs> basically we're stuck on 96 percent unless they change their their requirements and i it doesn't really matter it's fine with me we can be 100 percent and 90 percent 96 percent silver and the, the gold level with 26 percent at the gold level and 20 and gold level is so much more for really big corporate open source projects so that's even more of these uh, loftier things in an open source project so uh, i don't think we'll go any further there there either but I i'm 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 content with this uh, so unless anyone else is uh, feeling this is a problem we, we i think i'll leave it to this if someone has an issue with this we can discuss it and see what we can uh, do with it going forward and uh, this this is the same slide that last year everyone is still using curl actually so we have we're part of a lot of the really big volume applications on uh, phones we're in 
basically all the operating systems nowadays we're in um, a majority of all modern cars we're in game consoles some of the really high volume game consoles we're in some we're certainly used by some of the really high volume games on uh, both on on uh, game consoles on 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 windows machines too so we're estimating somewhere around 10 billion installations these days that's an insane amount of uh, inst installations and the number is mind-boggling and it also has this interesting uh, sort of uh, other effect right so have have we saturated the market can we can we reach it further how how many more installations can we actually have or or have we have we already peaked have we flatlined the number of installations but I'm not sure it matters because uh, we still need to improve curl and, and a lot of these installations will of course appreciate a better curl next year or the year after so even if they already use curl I'm sure that a lot of these will use and will appreciate a better curl with more features and make it and we still need to make sure that curl keeps up with uh, developments and you know internet transfer developments going forward okay so how's how about which is uh, here's a, a, a new section I didn't have last year and I haven't had any in, in my previous state of curl presentations money in the project and I think it's it's um, it's worthy of a little section and mention here money in the curl project so we have I'm going uh, let me run through a little bit of our finances and, and the sponsors in the, in the project because it might be interesting we of course we need money but curl is not a legal entity curl actually doesn't exist as anything C curl is a um, uh, is a group of people on the internet right and we have a we we gather under a name we produce stuff that we call curl but it's not legal we haven't registered it anywhere we don't even have our own domain name because we use the curl.hacks.se so it's under the hacks domain um the website um and uh, actually i've i've, I've actually over the years tried to get uh, various curl uh, domains but they've all been taken since a very long time so curl.com curl.net curl.org they're all um, bought and used since forever so i've sort of given up even curl.se is, is uh, used so i didn't care about it early on in the early days and uh, i guess i will never have them anyway it doesn't matter curl is not a legal entity so it's not a company it's not an organization it's not human it's not nothing you can't really hold on to money because it's nothing it can't hold on so we we are happy customers and users and uh, believers in open collective and Col open collective is a u.s nonprofit. they hold on to our funds so when we get money to the project we actually get them to open collective and then they hold on to our money for us so we can spend money and and uh, re get in reimbursements from open collective and i as a human being i'm here working with curl and i'm employed by wolf ssl and this is so i just want full transparency here and of course i when working for wolf ssl we offer i offer commercial cur curl services and i'll get back to sort of what that means for everyone <coughs> still that's how it works so we have finances we have sponsors and i work for wolf ssl so curl is not a legal entity we can hold on to money but we still have expenses so we have a bunch of fun and good expense sponsors that swallow and take our expenses so we have since the beginning of time hacks as i said the domain curl.hacks.se it's the hacks I see domain is owned by hacks hacks is a company I'm a part owner hacks me and a few friends hacks owns and runs the main server that we run the curl site on the main mailing lists and a bunch of other services around uh, curl so basically hacks is taking the, the costs for the main servers and a lot of admin stuff we as, as I mentioned before fastly takes a lot of bandwidth off the main server so they really they take a lot of hits and uh, makes makes the website a good experience for the world and we have um sir ci services taking the expenses for for ci costs to team viewer 
uh, sponsors uh, CA services on, on Appveyor and Travis and Azure pipelines both have bumped up uh, the, the le our CI uh, sort of uh, usage tier for us for free. So these companies make sure that we don't have to pay for these services. So we get the services in the project without having to pay them because these companies do. We have a gold sponsor, Elastic, that that is um, sponsoring us with uh, 500 USD per month for, for expenses. We have a bunch of silver sponsors. They pay 100 USD per month to the project for expenses. And here you can see there are a bunch of smaller companies, m maybe unknown to you. And um, I'm not going to mention all of them right now, but uh, these are all smaller companies and they uh, they help out, of course, especially accumulated because it tend gets quite a large amon amount of money taken together. And some of these are short term sponsors. So maybe next year they won't be the same ones because not all of them are, are able to maintain a sponsorship over the that long term. But awesome companies. So all of these companies you see here, they're good companies. They're friends of the project. We love them. And I wanted to speci specifically highlight a few other major single shot donors in, in, in the last year. And they're major because they've uh, donated sizable chunks of money during this time period. It's and I'm doing it as a sort of short list and the top list because at number four, you Uffizi, I don't know how they uh, pronounce this. Is it Uffizi or Uffizi? I don't know. Uffizi Cloud donated 1300 USD just like that in one single chunk. A lot of money. Thank you. Comcast uses curl in a um, some kind of product. I think it's a, a router or, or gateway somehow that they they have some sort of uh, network speed feature in the gateway at least that's what they told me when they donated 5000 USD to the project awesome indeed has a uh, internal open source project uh, so open source fund thing within the company where they fund open source project they use within the company so they actually have they hand out 10k USD every month to different projects that they use within the in within the company which is a, an awesome thing to do right and one month was it December 2019? Uh, in that time frame, at least, they dis they nominated and uh, selected Curl to be the recipient recipient of, of this f that month's fund, and we got 10k from them. Lovely, and to top it off, uh, the number one major single shot donor in this period, Backblaze gave us 15,600 USD in one go a while ago. Backblaze, of course, being a, a company, who they do off, uh, I mean, they do on backups, you know, over the network backups remotely on, on in, in the cloud, and they use curl within their product. And uh, so they, I think he mentioned he donated 100 USD for every month they used curls successfully in their product. And that ended up 156 months. I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was like that. So lots of money uh, again awesome companies here thank you and of course we get a lot of uh, getting money uh, to open collective like this is a, a very convenient and easy way for us to do it so uh, it's easy for smaller donors you can do single shot you know you can donate any amount uh, down to the, like one dollar if you need to want to and so as you can see here 189 individuals and 85 organizations have contributed um, I think this is uh, all uh, all time contributors, so it's actually slightly longer than just the last year. Uh, still, a huge amount of people and a lot of money. Uh, the balance as of April 28, which is then happens to be two days ago, since this is April 30 when I record this, 54,000 USD. A lot of money in the project, held on to us, held on to us by um, Open Collective. So what do we do? We have expenses th then without direct sponsors, which is expenses that we have to take care of as, as a project instead. So we do the bug bounty. 
and uh, again it started carefully we will increase the amounts we've ha handed out 1400 usd so far as as you could as you saw just in my slides before we have 54k we've handed out 1.4k we can significantly uh, increase these amounts significantly uh, without risking our finances and i think we by doing that we will also benefit all the users because i hope that by doing that we will encourage more users to search for security problems and we will get a better product we introduced a, a, a sponsor sponsored travel lodging to curl up this year 2020 which is ironic because this of course is the year we don't do curl up uh, in, in person at least so nobody will travel so we won't sponsor anyone uh, with travel and lodging but we will certainly keep this program and possibly bump it up even more next year so that we will make sure that we get more people together to to discuss curl stuff because i think that's important i think we we as a project grow uh, and develop uh, at these events and of course we do st things like um, merchandise and marketing for things so more stickers and more sending out stuff to people in the world yeah getting that funded is also cool and it helps us you know be popular and, and reach out and, and be there among people and i'm always interested in them so, so now we have money we have finances to actually sponsor things pay for things so if you have ideas of what to do in the curl project then maybe it costs money maybe you have an idea that we should do and yeah we can actually spend money on things right because we have money we're not afraid to spend it but we it has to be for the benefit of the project and, and for the users of, of our products okay <coughs> i'm getting long i'm at uh, 126 right so let's hurry up what have we done then d during the last 12 months i've showed you with a lot of graphs and a lot of activity things that we've been doing you know we've added code we've done commits we've posted emails we've posted issues we've fixed pull requests and we've done a lot we've fixed around 850 big bugs we've done 25 changes that we've mentioned at least and we've fixed three cves some of the things we've removed in the project so they were we've introduced this pro uh, the concept of deprecating things uh, uh, and during this last year we've actually removed things that we've gradually removed uh, or marked as deprecated sort of and we removed the global cache the d global dns cache we've removed the http pipelining support and we removed support for polar ssl all of these have been individually motivated elsewhere so i'm, I'm not going to repeat that <coughs> we've added a bunch of new libcore options make sure that connections survive in the connection pool for uh, just a limited time you can exp Extract the retry after value from uh, Apple applications, retry after being a HTTP header. We can use the OS ZID in, in SASL authentication with the, the email protocols. We can s limit the maximum number of concurrent streams in, in uh, multiplex protocols like HTTP2 in, and hopefully in the coming HTTP3. We can allow uh, recipients to fail when, you, when we send emails to many recipients one if, if one of them fails that is not a fatal error anymore if you ask curl to treat it like that and you can make sure that curl uh, open or the tls backend like open ssl can uh, will refuse refuse to accept the partial chain as a, a correct one when verifying certificates it's actually reverting back to the old behavior because we modified that behavior over the year <coughs> and we've done new things in curl this is just what we did the last 12 months we added http3 support with two backends we've added a new function called curl multi poll which waits a little more than the previous curl multi wait but it's very similar you should read the man pages to figure out the differences but we also had introduced the curl multi wake up which which can wake up a multi poll function um, from another thread we added a new TLS backend, as uh, as of before the Lily graph showing how many we support. But yep, bare SSL is one of the new ones. We added a new SSH backend as the number three among the SSH backends. So certainly much fewer than TLS backends, but there are also much fewer SSH backends, uh, SSH back and libraries to pick from. The SSH, the Wolf SSL H backend is only for SFTP so far, and it's. I haven't actually completed everything 
in, in that but it's there and it works for for some some uh, of, of the operations I've done a, an extra effort with a I call tiny curl which is an effort to make sure that uh, we can provide a smaller curl to those who need smaller a smaller footprint curl on smaller operating systems typically real-time operating systems where Linux is too big and it's going to be I'm going to work more on tiny curl going forward we will landed MQTT support very recently as a new protocol the number 25 we've improved a lot of things in curl we can now parse uh, URLs with, a, with, an, uh, with an empty authority or host part which basically is useful when you want to use the, the curl URL parser to parse other URL uh, scheme schemes than what we support and, and some of them have no authority parts so now you can say hey I want to parse another scheme that you don't know about and uh, you should allow it to not have uh, an authority we can now uh, get the the transfer the, the, the transfer info function uh, so that that's a progress uh, callback and you can actually return the continue value there so that you can actually use both the internal callback uh, output and having the internal uh, so you don't get both parts you get your own callback and the internal behavior at the uh, same time uh, we fixed the SOX connections to become totally non-blocking it's a big improvement for people who are using uh, SOX proxies with the multi interface we've added and changed things in the command line too we've added introduced parallel transfers with the capital Z this is a big change for the command line tool it's, uh, it then also got these two additional uh, command line options to make sure that we can actually uh, fiddle with the uh, parallel transfers we added a new option to that similar to dash s which is silent which also switches off the progress meter is that the dash s switches off more the progress no progress meter only switches off the progress meter we added e tags options and the same thing for the command line tool that i mentioned for libcurl allow recipients to fail and we added json support in the write out option so you can actually get a json object output of metadata after a transfer the test suite is now better on windows we got a new our own private sox server or I mean written ourselves to make it easier and better and makes it easier to write better tests and, and verify things so the SOX support got better and the SOX tests are much better we're switching over to the dy dynamic server ports instead of using fixed ports in the test suite it's not completed but we're gradually switching over more and more of the servers that way the test cases are now pre-processed as a, as a result of the dynamic server ports so that we can all the different test servers can now use the different server ports and everything better with these variables that we use in the test cases we uh, i did this fun thing which is a random skip for torture testing so that it, it enables us to do more torture testing in the ci torture testing being you know introducing injection failure really in, in test cases so that we test exit paths all over so that we never leak memory wherever we return error and we don't ever crash because of, of returning an error and this turned out to be really nice and now we can random skip to make sure that we go through more test cases in the in, in the ci jobs doing torture testing it was a really it's a good boost for torture testing and helped us improve the quality of curl notably and we have <coughs> we have done a lot more and better CI over the year as you saw the graphs before we've grown significantly over the last year and it's I think we have more to grow there too and we've worked a lot of distributing the different CI jobs over the different services to make sure that we use them better <coughs> other news in the project the last year I've added uh, bug report links on a much more uh, much more places on the documentation sections so if you read a document in curl or, or documentation you can nowadays easily find off in most uh, sections of the web page you can find a in the upper right corner you can find a report bug on this particular doc and and it'll take you to the github issues page with a uh, title <coughs> partly filled in with the wh what kind of documentation you're filing the bug about <coughs> in an effort to make sure that users can now submit bugs easier on on when they you know i this doesn't look right i want to file a bug oh here's a link i'll file a bug <coughs> i 
I provided, I uh, now provided a dashboard with uh, I think it's 28 different graphs showing activity in the project and a lot of the graphs are the graphs you s you've seen in this presentation today. They're generated daily in, in the dashboard uh, page and you should really check it out. They're created by the new code and uh, put in the curl stats git repository so everything is there and in the public of course and you can reproduce all those graphs yourself just to verify that I'm not hallucinating. So basically all of these graphs are shown in this presentation. You can reproduce yourself with those scripts using the Git repository and other stuff that we're all putting out in the public already anyway. So nothing there is secret. Right, so, uh, and I've mentioned this many times already, we have the hacker one bug bounty that's new for this year. And uh, some other little side news that the Google announced a competitor to curl, they called libcurl which was uh, a funny name, I think, maybe, or a stupid name. The different, uh, different, opini different opinions have uh, been uttered. Anyway, they basically announced in June in 2019 that they would do this library and it would work like libcurl, but use Chromium as the network uh, sort of stack for it. And it would be a way to test the network stack, the Chromium network stack, but uh, subsequently, they abandoned that, so that project has been closed. It was done by an intern, it didn't go anywhere, so forget about it, move on. Fun little thing, Mr. Robot, the TV show, used Curl in December 2019, and here's one screenshot from that, where we can see Mr. Robot uh, running a weirdly looking Python program that invokes Curl. Um, there's another screenshot too, I, I blogged about it, you can find it. Yeah, right, the, the intro uh, <coughs> slide for this presentation is also is using the another screenshot I took from that another episode. episode season 4, episode 8 and season 4, episode 10 shows uh, the both show curl in use. Okay, so what's less good in the project? Of course, I'm not really the, the right person to say what's bad in the project or less good because I'm again I'm, I'm probably the worst guy to ask about that because I'm so deep into this but we still I'm, 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 I'm uh, these are actually th the same uh, labels I used uh, last year when I uh, went through this in, in the state of curl 2019 so we still have flaky tests and CI I would say they're mostly CI because they're mostly not as flaky when you run them locally but we still suffer from this quite a lot so we rarely have a commit or PR where all the tests or the CIs actually go green. And usually most of the red ones are just because of flaky tests of, uh, on the CIs and that's so annoying. It, is make it makes it too easy to miss, a, 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 I mean, a correct error somewhere because, oh, they're flaky as usual, so just skip them. And that's, you know, that's why we don't want warnings instead of we get warning fatigue and you certainly get these red CI job fatigue in, in our environment and that's bad and we and we need to keep working on this. Our CI test has certainly improved, uh, I mean the slow CI uh, uh, has certainly improved over the year, especially since um, uh, we've spread out to, to use Azure more and GitHub more, Th so they've taken over some of the Travis jobs so we got down in number of Travis jobs at the same time as Travis stepped up our tier so we now we now do much better so we complete our 82 CI jobs they usually complete within a few hours so that's certainly much better than last year we're much better at number of vulnerabilities that are being reported as mentioned already several times in my in my presentation here we still get regressions as in having to do a quick follow-up release like we did 769.1 within seven days because of that not good we fix that by m making sure that we add more tests i'm not sure we're we've, we're done or we've succeeded yet but still and of course we need more people to stick around because usually this is what limits our uh, pace of development if more people are here more people develop we could do more things uh, over over the period of time. I, see, I mean, it's not a big problem because we'll, we'll uh, get there eventually anyway, but still. So Everything Curl is still the book about Everything Curl. It hasn't changed much during the last year. It 
changed in that we upgraded sort of the, the, the site we're using it book.com they modified their backend so we had to upgrade to the newer version of the backend which meant that we lost the ebook versions of the book um, so there uh, the book is only available as on the website and as a PDF now unfortunately but still a free service so I'm, I still appreciate it I the stats say that it's 95.3 percent complete which means that we have basically I have headlines for for more content and if we add more co and and the the, num the percentage of completed is just if we maintain the same number of words for those headlines that's the that's sort of the, l the level of completeness we're at now i'm sure that since it hasn't uh, since we haven't i haven't written much in this book the last year we're missing out all of those things that i mentioned that we've added during the last 12 months they're not very well covered in the book so the complete less level should probably go down and we should add more titles and subtitles for things that we've added that we still haven't documented in the book still it's there still it's pretty good i wanted to mention something about my role in the project this year because i rarely actually speak about my myself in the project like this um i'm not curl curl is not me but i do a lot of things in curl so i wanted to maybe say something about what I do here and what I'm what I want to do. So I'm here because I am having fun. I like working on curl. This is my work and this is my hobby. And I, and I certainly appreciate and I really really enjoy being able to do this full time. I work with curl. I've created curl 22 years ago and now I do curl full time. It's sort of a it's a little, little bit of a dream coming true. I'm living I'm living the dream sort of and I and I'm in t I intend to stick around in the project. I'm I'm not going anywhere. I'm I'm still having a lot of fun and I probably more fun as I've ever had in the project. So I, I'm not going anywhere. And I intend to keep developing and push forward in in all those aspects that I think we should go. And um, I want to keep doing that. But I also want to keep doing curl full time, which means that I work for Wolf SSL and I still and I need to make sure that I get get to continue that, which is only possible if I can keep charging companies for support, features, help, whatever. And so I'm going to continue doing curl commercially for customers and I'm going to keep doing curl for myself and for the community, sort of those different things um, separately, basically. Um, me, curl, Wolfless, Wolf SSL, we're three different entities here in the same game uh, working on curl going forward and I'm sure I'm, I'm sure that maybe at some point I will mess up and, and sort of confuse the different the three different entities here but I'm sure that you will tell me someone will tell me if, m if I'm misbehaving <coughs> so what I think I do in the curl project not what anyone else actually says I do or anyone else tell me to do because nobody actually tells me what to do in the curl project I do it because I want to and I, I think I serve a purpose here in the Curl project because I started it and I, I think I'm, I'm one of the few people who actually still have this sort of vision where what Curl is and I, I, I'm not one of the I still think so but I, I'm, I, st I think that I'm one of the ones who actually uh, stick around and, and say that I think Curl should do this I, sh I think Curl shouldn't do this this is the way forward this is not the way forward because of blah 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 and I, I certainly do a lot of the curl development, as you saw all the commits I do. I still I do a lot of debugging. So I, I develop things and I fix things. Oh, sorry, wrong order. And um, I stick around to support users of curl in different ways. And I certainly help users debug their problems and, and get around issues and get forward. And <coughs> this is what I spend a lot of time doing, those two things, right? The two, these two things. And I, of course, review a lot of code and suggestions. So if you if you pu uh, submit a pull request, chances are I will be there within soon with com uh, comments and suggestions or, or merge your pull request when, when everything looks fine. And I think making sure that we can accept more developers and sort of help more people get involved, that's, that's the primary goal of being here. So make sure that we get more developers in because more developers can do more things. And I, of course, I am the brain behind most of 
the architecture and design of things in Carl. So I'm here to help people. Uh, I'm here to remind people how it works and why it works like this, and and make sure that sort of guide people to do the right thing going forward, the the way I think is right, or get educated what what the new ways of doing things or modify things to how we should do it, it instead. And of course, work a lot on documentation. Documentation on, on how we do things, how the code works, how protocol works, how curl work with those protocols and everything. So everything is documented all the time. If I get run over by bus tomorrow, everything is there. There's no th secrets. I don't do any magic thing. I don't have any particular you know, treasure box of things on the side that someone needs to know. But everything is there and should be there all the time. I also think that I serve a pretty good purpose by providing information since I do a lot of th these things on the left side so I uh, development and help users and, and document stuff I know what's going on and I know what we're working on so I'm trying to to do to inform everyone at least about the bigger things what we're working on what I want to work on and, and sort of where we're going and big protocol developments and, and stuff like that to make sure that people are aware people who are interested can oh we're working on that now i want to be part of that or or uh, get newbies interested in in finding out things and, and getting involved and, and and joining and working with curl so and to do that i hope and i really try to to follow along with the protocols that curl works with so i'm i'm working hard to to be there on the forefront of the protocol development at least uh, uh, within the primary and the major protocols curl supports i'm not a master of all the protocols that curl supports because it <laughs> supports too many protocols for that to be possible for me at least but i mean at least the, the primary ones so i'm talking http ones the ftp the ssh based ones i i i really want to be there and and know the bits and understand everything to make sure that curl does the right things when it comes to those protocols i'm actually also involved on the side within the ietf and stuff with protocols sort of with a similar purpose to be make sure that the protocols are also done the proper the best ways and that curl can talk those protocols the best proper way and of course i admin and host the website the mailing list and a lot of other things on, on, um, at the side sometimes i I've end up to be the public face of, of the project and a lot of people call it mine i Possibly I also do that myself at some time uh, uh, because, uh, well, I created it, I started it, I lead it to, s to some extent. I do a lot of development in it, but it's not my project. I don't see it as my project. It's a, I'm certainly there in the project. I do a lot of things in the project, but the project is uh, its own entity. I, I'm part of the project. You know, as a Venn diagram, I would have an overlap, but it's not me. The project is, is its own entity. But I do talk a lot about the project. I do a lot of talks and presentations. I, I talk, uh, you know, on my blog, I basically don't blog about anything else but, uh, about, uh, but curl. So I, I understand why the overlap between curl and myself is, is significant to, to, to most people. <coughs> so going forward into the future, what do we do? What do we do in the future? Well, I can't tell you really what we will do because we're all uh, here as individuals and, and volunteers primarily. So anyone can do what uh, they want to do and I do what I want to do. And I have ideas when I want to do next. And I've, I've communicated them and I, I did a um, 2020 roadmap webinar just a few weeks ago. You can go back and see the video. And I have, I think, eight different ideas that I want to work on. I don't think I will work on all those eight, but those are at least sort of suggestions or ideas that I'm throwing out there. But potentially work on and if you have ideas if you want to get them done start working on them if you want to have commercially things for your for your project you can get in touch with me and, and become a commercial customer and I will certainly focus on those projects that someone will pay me to do and of course these priorities will change over time as maybe as protocols change as I change my, my minds or if customers show up and I'm always interested in, in user feedback right tell me what you want tell me what you see and what where are we going next what should we do <coughs> and all i had this as a standing point the version 8 there is going to be a version 8 of curl at some point we do releases every 56 days and we did um eh, I'm, I, so the, it's not uh, it's, it's a mistake it's 7.71 is coming in june 2028 
2020. So I think my lot math here is wrong, is it? Oh well. Anyway, I don't want to do a 7.100, so I want to bump to version 8 bef before there's going to be a 7.100, because I think it's going to be so much confusion with the 7.100 between it's going to look like 7.1 or 7.10. And we did a 7.10.0 too, so it's going to be totally confusing, so let's not go there. So before we get there, we need to bump it to 8, which is somewhere around April 2025, maybe. Maybe my math was completely wrong, maybe it's a little bit longer, uh, or not. It doesn't matter, we need to bump to version 8 at some point, but I think it's going to be just a, a the Linux kernel style of, of bumping evolutionary not revolutionary so at some point we're just going to bump it to version 8 without it being with any big whistles or fanfares or anything just bump it um if you have an idea around that uh, let me know <coughs> all right i already mentioned this for the future uh, so let's skip that uh, so rounding up my talk today here is how you get in touch with us or First, I will of course mention that I'm back there on Twitter. So if you want to follow me, I talk a lot about curl on Twitter, of course, because I that's basically what I work on. So I sit for myself here at home all the time. I need to, to talk curl with people and, and brag about it and show different uh, weird things and, and protocol things. So follow me on Twitter. We talk about curl in the Freenode IRC channel, where usually around 100 people join there. There is a casual talk. We're always there. So if you want to talk, back and forth, you know, solve things, ask things, join us on IRC because it's a it's a merry bunch there and uh, we're there around the clock uh, always. If you file bug reports, do that on GitHub, file pull requests on GitHub uh, as, uh, at these uh, URLs. If you have questions, support, want to do things, you want to ask things, use the curl users mailing list for, for things about the command line too. Use the curl library mailing list for things around the library or development or bug fixes or, or things like that. And uh, that's the, the URL for the mailing list. And of course, I forgot to mention again then the bug bounty here. So if you have a security related issue, go to the security the curl security page and submit a, an, uh, an issue there straight away. So we keep security issues um, non-disclosed while we're working on them so that we can uh, disclose them uh, responsibly uh, with together with the associated fix and be be nice to our users <coughs> so i think this is basically what i wanted to say to you today and it's become a two hour long episode this so it's uh, uh, i reckon not many of you actually made it all this far but really finally i really hope that we can do a proper curl up in 2021 uh, again somewhere in europe we were going to be in berlin 2020 this may but uh, we're not so hope maybe we're going to maybe retry berlin in 2021 maybe somewhere else i really hope it's going to be a physical meetup because i think physically it's going it's a completely different conversation and discussions so that's it and that's it for for my state of the curl 2020 presentation get in touch with us if you have any comments or feedback or anything about this um, see you around um have a good curl day that's it for uh, for my presentation and um i'll try uh, to do another presentation in um 2021 <laughs> there will of course be a lot of other curl presentations so just stick around follow me and, and read up everywhere and uh, there will be more more curl all the time have a good day <coughs>